Hi, Space Lab. I'm Matt Kleban. I'm an associate professor of physics at New York University, and I'm here to answer your questions. First question is, is there a maximum size for a black hole? So it's a very good question, and before I answer it, just quickly, what do we mean by the size of a black hole? The size of a black hole is best thought of as the radius of the event horizon. So black holes are regions that not even light can escape from, and there's a certain size to the region uh, from, from which no light can get out. And um, the edge of that region is called the event horizon, and it has a radius, it has a size. So that's what we mean by the size of a black hole. And actually, the radius of the event horizon, so the size of the black hole, is just proportional to the amount of matter and energy that you throw into it. And in fact, uh, so, so if you had access to an infinite amount of matter and energy, you could just keep feeding it to the black hole, and it would just keep growing bigger and bigger, and there's no limit in that sense. But of course, in the universe we live in, we don't have access to an infinite amount of matter and energy. And even if we could somehow fly around uh, all of the universe and collect all the matter and energy in it, even if we did that, it would still have a maximum size because there's a finite amount of matter and energy in the universe that we could collect. And that size would be something like a fraction of, the, of uh, the size of the universe today. So it would be maybe billions of light years across, very, very big, but still finite size. The second question is, can matter exist without space? That's a very good question and a very hard question. And the honest answer is, we don't know for sure. But what we can say is that we have a theory that relates matter to space and actually to time as well. And although we don't think that theory is an exact description of the world, it's the best one we've got. And that theory is called general relativity. It's the theory that Albert Einstein in 1916 or so uh, first discovered. And according to Einstein, there's an equation, well, actually a set of equations called Einstein's equations, which relate matter to space and time. And it turns out it's possible to solve those equations when there's no matter. You could have zero matter and zero energy, but still have space and time. But it's not possible to solve those equations uh, when you have matter, but without space and time. So in other words, you can have space and time without matter, but at least according to Einstein's equations, you can't have matter without space and time. Now, we don't think that's the end of the story. We don't think that's the exact uh, laws of physics. And it could be that whatever is the exact laws of physics could somehow allow matter to exist without space. But I think at least for the moment, the state of the art is no, it's, as far as we know, it's, it's not possible. The third question is, if we were able to overcome the problem of infinite energy for light travel and travel through space at sea, at the speed of light, that is, would time dilation mean that from our perspective, traveling anywhere would be instantaneous? And would this then mean that we would actually exist at every point in our vector at the same time? Well, that's another very good question. And the reason for the question is that when you move very fast, when you move very close to the speed of light, there's a phenomenon called time dilation which means that for you, if you're the one moving very close to the speed of light, not very much time is gonna pass. So for instance, if you travel from the Earth to Alpha Centauri on a spaceship that's moving very close to the speed of light, then very little time will pass for you. You won't age very much at all. Your clocks won't tick off very much time. The people on Earth and the people on Alpha Centauri will watch you make this trip and they'll say it took you a couple of years at least to, to, to make that trip, but for you, it could be a very short amount of time. Now the interesting thing is this is a theory of relativity and everything should be relative to the observer. And so you might ask, how could it be that you can make that trip in such a short period of time? And the answer is if you go to your, we call it reference frame. So when you're driving in a car on the highway, you see buildings and trees and stuff like that along the road coming towards you at 60 miles an hour. You're at rest, the trees and the buildings are coming towards you. That's your reference frame. In the spaceship, you're at rest and Alpha Centauri is coming towards you. And the speed it's coming towards you is pretty close to the speed of light. It can never be greater. You can never go faster than the speed of light. Uh, but it'll be coming towards you at nearly the speed of light. And the reason that you make the trip in such a short period of time is because there's another strange phenomenon in relativity, which is called Lorentz contraction, which is that distances get contracted. So distances look shorter when objects are moving fast. And so the distance that you would measure between you and Alpha Centauri is much shorter than the distance that someone at rest on Earth would measure. And that's how you're able to make the journey in such a small uh, period of time. So to answer the question about whether everything would be instantaneous uh, in the limit that you're moving at the speed of light, the answer is yes. Because in the limit that you're moving at the speed of light, no time passes for you as you make this trip. 
And from your point of view, there's no distance actually between Earth and Alpha Centauri. Um, and so that's how you can cross it in, the, in just an instant. And so, yeah, you'd be everywhere between Earth and Alpha Centauri at the same time in one instant. Thanks for the great questions. If you have more questions for the next expert, please leave them in the comments below.